Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to understand the chapter Circulatory System from ICC 10 Biology. One of the most important chapters which fetches you around 8 to 9 marks in your board examination. So please be attentive and I am planning to cut the chapter into different videos instead of covering it all in one and not uh, able to make you understand. So let's go quickly and learn all the um, initial parts which does not require much time. So initially they are talking about what is a transport system okay so uh, and what is the function of it so we all know that um, whatever the digestive system is doing it prepares nutrients respiratory system is bringing in oxygen uh, and it needs to get rid of carbon dioxide all this requires a liquid medium or a transport medium to carry it around and that transport medium in our body is blood and blood does the job of transporting nutrients from your uh, intestine into different parts of your body respiratory system or whatever oxygen it gives uh, needs to be given to all the cells that is also done by the blood carbon dioxide which is produced through respiration in your body is also uh, taken from the cells and given to the lungs by the blood and so on it is explaining about um, also about transport of hormones different enzymes in your body everything is done by the transport system which is the circulatory system okay now um, there are different circulating fluids and non-circulating fluids examples can be asked for one mark so you need to know what are the circulating fluids circulating fluids are blood lymph and tissue fluid and non-circulating fluids also please mark synovial fluid vitreous humor um, and so on please mark over there itself one mark question okay now we should know uh, blood you know is the liquid that is contained in the heart and the blood vessels what exactly is tissue fluid you let's understand as blood is passing from artery to arterioles to capillary as the diameter of the blood vessel goes on decreasing from as you can understand artery then to arteriole which is smaller branch and then to cap capillary which is even sm smaller what happens is that because of the increase in pressure why would the pressure increase because volume is decreasing because of the increase in pressure some part of the blood will ooze out okay ooze out of the capillary and that is called as tissue fluid at a later point in your textbook it is explained as well okay so some part of the blood's liquid part oozes out from the capillary and that is called as tissue fluid tissue fluid keeps on occupying the space between cells and it starts taking away all the uh, waste materials like carbon dioxide and so on after it is done with that function it goes back into a vessel but it doesn't go into the blood vessel instead it goes into the lymphatic vessels of our body there is a picture of lymphatic vessel also in given in the textbook so please refer to that once it reaches the lymphatic vessel once what reaches once the tissue fluid reaches the lymphatic vessel the same tissue fluid itself is called as lymph please have that clarity so that you don't get confused between what is this tissue fluid and lymph okay yeah then they are also talking about the properties of blood which hardly any question comes except for maybe the ph of blood so underline that 7.3 to 7.4 nearing neutral however slightly alkaline functions of blood to be learned uh, can be categorized into transport of many things digested food oxygen uh, carbon dioxide excretory material uh, hormones uh, and regulatory functions regulatory function regulation of heat and so on <clears throat> also protection under protection clotting of blood immunity all those are also functions of blood two mark question can be expected from this so learn properties of blood only for a mcq functions of blood for two mark question accordingly plan your answer then blood components blood consists of a liquid part also and cells also the liquid part is called as the plasma in which all the cells are kept cells are red 
blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Okay. And how much portion of it is liquid? 55 to 60 percent is liquid plasma. The liquid portion is called as plasma. Then what are the constituents of plasma? They don't ask this direct question. Instead, they can give um, a kind of a question where they give you odd one out um, normal contents like water, protein, inorganic salts and uh, things like that can be given and something which is unrelated can be given along with it as a odd one out. So learn this up. See this other substances um, you don't have to worry but inorganic salt they have given which all are the inorganic salt. So you should be clear. One is our common salt sodium chloride. Another is sodium bicarbonate. So these two along with what all glucose, amino acids, hormones and fibrinogen. This fibrinogen please underline label mark. Very very important because the liquid part of blood is called plasma. Correct? Plasma from plasma if you remove this fibrinogen then you get something called a serum. So two mark question differentiate between plasma and serum. Learn that as well. Then cells of the blood, RBC, WBC and platelets, each of them we need to know in detail certain things only. You no know, need to mug up everything. Other names definitely you should know that is basic. Erythrocytes, leukocytes and thrombocytes that you need to know definitely. Other than that, uh, how many days does RBC live? Important question, 120 days. Okay, then uh, hemoglobin is present where? In the RBC it is present. Hemoglobin carries oxygen. Then you call that as oxyhemoglobin. Where is that? That also needs to be marked. When hemoglobin is carrying carbon dioxide, then you call that as not carboxyhemoglobin. That is where you will make an error. It is called as carbaminohemoglobin. Please mark that. Learn it as well. If it is carboxyhemoglobin, then what is the hemoglobin combined with? It is combined with carbon monoxide. So carbon with, uh, sorry, hemoglobin with oxygen, hemoglobin with carbon monoxide, hemoglobin with carbon dioxide. What are the names? You should know it definitely. It is going to come. Why is RBC small in size? Another question. Underline this statement. Two, it enables it to travel through fine capillaries. Okay, label that. Um, then we can learn this 120. Okay, then there is a table, very important table. This is what you should learn. Why do RBCs not have nucleus can be a question. Mitochondria can be a question. Endoplasmic reticulum can be a question. None of it is present in RBC and it is biconcave shape. Why is it biconcave shape? Another question. Okay. What is the reason for it to be biconcave? Also, you can mark children. Um, where is uh, it's here? The biconcave uh, shape helps it to have a larger surface area which makes them very efficient in absorbing oxygen. All these are regular frequent board questions so please learn them. Coming to WBC's other name definitely you should know and there are two functions of it given very specifically. One is diapedesis, another is phagocytosis. Both you should know. What are they? See. Uh, when RBC is going through, um, let's say, a blood vessel, sometimes it oozes out of the blood vessel. For what pur purpose? To engulf something. Okay. The oozing out of RBC, uh, sorry, WBC, very, very sorry, WBC, the oozing out of WBC from the capillary, the picture is also shown, is called as diapedesis. Diapedesis is again one mark define question usually it comes okay repeating because I yeah first and foremost diapedesis what is diapedesis oozing out of oozing this one oozing out of a WBCs from capillaries is called as diapedesis once it comes out usually it engulfs or it tries to eat up some antigen and that process is called as phagocytosis that also you need to learn here here it is given um, neutroph especially the neutrophils engulf particle like sub solid substances especially bacteria so instead of that you can write as antigen also that is called as phagocytosis now from the table of wbc's what table is it 
WBCs are categorized into granular and non-granular. Okay, or a granular. The two, three types of granular are neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Non-granular are lymphocytes and monocytes. Each one has a specific function. Okay, neutrophil, phagocytosis, eosinophil, allergy. This is again one mark question, so learn that as well. Site of production, you need not actually put in any effort. All of them are produced in bone marrow. You can see. And this one, lymphocytes are also produced in lymph glands like uh, spleen and tonsils. Plus, that's the only added one. Otherwise, all of them are produced in bone marrow. So, learn that as well. So, what you are learning? Only the function you are learning. Okay. Also, which is the smallest of RBC, uh, WBCs, lymphocytes, produ which produces the antibodies. That's what, That's the one that you are learning. Now, what is pus has come once or twice. So, it is composed of dead WBC plus the tissue cells destroyed by bacteria. Learn that. Skipping. Uh, what is the difference, differentiate between question is there, right? Pattern is there. So, we need to know differentiate between antibodies and antitoxins are also given. So, learn that. Clotting of blood, extremely important. Let's go into the table and learn it. So, what is clotting of blood? Immediately when there is a cut or an injured tissue, platelets start going to that area, rush to that area and first and foremost, it will plug that. Okay, so this is the cut. Immediately platelets will go and plug it up, meaning cover it up. Then it also produces, two things are happening. It also produces or releases thrombokinase, one uh, factor, also called as factor X or thromboplastin. These are all proteins. Okay, so enzymes basically, they're all enzymes and uh, the, the one and the same, they are all the same. Thrombokinase, otherwise called as thromboplastin or factor X is produced by the platelet. All of them are this one and the same and it's a protein. What does this protein do? It starts a cascading reaction, meaning it starts a stepwise reaction. What is it starting? It will convert an, one kind of protein called as prothrombin, which is present in the liquid part of the blood called as plasma. In the plasma, there is a protein called as prothrombin. Okay. The moment this is produced, that is thrombokinase is produced, it will convert prothrombin into thrombin. Again, thrombin will start acting upon another protein present in the plasma called as fibrinogen. And that will be converted into fibrin. Fibrin is like this. This thread kind of net which covers up every single part making sure that no blood can go out and that is called as the clot. So, this you need to learn up very much. There is a ion um, uh, that is a cation uh, required for it. Okay. And that is the calcium ion. Again, this is again a question. One type of vitamin is required for this process. That is vitamin K. All these are one mark as well. So, two mark question, your uh, reaction of uh, clotting. One mark MCQs are this calcium ion and vitamin K. Okay, so this much we are going to stop. We learn about the uh, blood transfusion, blood grouping and everything in the next video. Thank you. Keep watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Share with your friends as well all the videos. Thank you.